Hi, good evening. I like to welcome you to Poem Praise 2. I do thank you for tuning in and certainly peace and blessings be upon you and your family this evening. Now we are going to get into the names of God. We're on chapter number 5, which is the Almighty God. El Shaddai. This is take number four of this chapter. Obey his word. Claim his power. And it goes like this. Of course, these promises didn't just fall into the lap of Abraham's children. They had to stay true to God's covenant with Abraham before he could bless them as he desired. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, excuse me, thou shalt keep my covenant. Therefore thou and thy seed after thee and their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee. Genesis 17, 9 and 10. Brother Sumra, you say, do you expect me to believe that all the Jews have obeyed God's covenant? Hmm. Of course not. In fact, history proves that most of the Jews rejected God's covenant and denied his own beloved son who came to die for them. But a few were faithful. And God kept blessing the nation because of them. When God predicted the doom of Israel at the hands of the marauding Assyrians and Babylonians, he said, I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people. And they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down and none shall make them afraid. Zephaniah 3, 12 and 13. This faithful remnant of the Jews kept God's covenant alive. They were the reason God continued to bless the Jews even when the majority of them turned away from him. Their enemies would triumph over them for a time, but in the end the residue of my people shall spoil them, and the remnant of my people will possess them. Zephaniah 2.9 Though most Jews disobeyed God and disregarded his covenant, enough were loyal to keep open the channel to his covenant blessings. Today, there are thousands of Jewish Christians, Jews who have accepted Jesus as their Messiah, living in a land of Israel. They are living by God's new covenant, sealed with the blood of Christ. We can't expect God to keep on blessing Israel materially because of their faithfulness. And what about the descendants of Ishmael? Hmm. How do we account for the tremendous power that the Arabs have today? Again, we must trace it back to a faithful remnant who have kept Abram's covenant with God. Granted, they are the black sheep of the covenantal family because of Ishmael's illegitimate descent from Abraham. Nevertheless, they belong to that family. Though they are not saved, the fact that God is blessing them indicates that some of them must be still faithful to him. Bible scholar Dr. William Smith notes, The sons of Ishmael people, the north and west of Arabian Peninsula and eventually formed the chief element of the Arab nation, the wandering Bedouin tribes. They are now mostly Mohammedans 
who took to him, i.e. Muhammad, as their spiritual father, as the Jew looks to Abra Abraham. Excuse me. But remember that Muhammad was not born until the 6th century A.D. What happened to Ishmael's descendants until that time? Many of them became Christians. In fact, Muhammad had to convert several Christian communities in Arabia before he could consolidate his power there. Muhammad had so many Christian friends that his Islamic doctrine was actually a theology which partook of elements of Judaism. Judaism, excuse me, Christianity, and Arabian Athenianism. Many of the Ishmael descendants were won to Christ during the 600 years before Muhammad's fanatical campaign. Is it running for office? Okay, I'm going to read the book. Even though I I'm reading the book, y'all, let me continue to read the book. Okay. Muhammad tried to wipe out Christianity in Arabia, but he failed. There are still a few small, strong, uh, tenacious Christian communities in Egypt, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the other oil-rich Arab nation of the Middle East. Is it really a coincidence, then, that God has blessed these nations? I think not. God the Almighty, El Shaddai. Is far greater than any political theory or economic system or social utopia. God blesses those who are faithful to him. Even when his blessings contradict human logic. And in the case of the Jews and the Arabs, we see God's blessing the descendants of one man who by all human odds, would have been long forgotten in the dust of history except for one thing. Abraham believed God, and it was imputed to him for righteousness. James 2, 23. Do you believe God is almighty? Hmm. Do you believe God will give you every good and perfect gift hmm. that you need to serve him. James 1, 17. Then be ready for God to do some marvelous things in your life and in the lives of your children. Now that does complete chapter number five. Now stay tuned for chapter number six. The Lord will provide. Jehovah Jireh. So until then, I want you and your family to be blessed. Have a wonderful rest of this evening and be well, take care, and be it thy will. I will talk with you soon here on Palm Praise 2. So until next time, later y'all.